Hello and welcome to KringleCon. My name is Ed Scotus and I'd like to give you this presentation here. It's a brief one, but it'll get you oriented to the KringleCon conference. This presentation has the subtitle of Start Here. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. The purpose of this presentation is, first of all, to welcome you to KringleCon. Thank you so much for joining us here at the North Pole. We are super excited. The elves have been working for over a year to put everything together to prepare Santa's castle. This is the very first conference we've ever hosted at Santa's castle. And making all the arrangements has taken so much effort by so many of the elves. And we're so thankful for them, too. We're glad you're here. And we're thankful that you made the trip. I also would like to provide a little history behind KringleCon to you so you can see kind of how did we get here and, and what is Santa up to? And I'd also like to give you an idea of what you can do at KringleCon to enjoy yourself and to take advantage of all the different activities that Santa Claus has planned for you. But I'd also like to thank one other person who made this all happen, and that would be Santa Claus himself. I tell you, Santa has been so good to us. What a jolly old elf. Such a fantastic, fantastic person Santa Claus is. I tell you, you know, if you go back over the last 15 years, Santa Claus has given us some deep insights into what's happening during the holiday season and especially at the North Pole. Uh, every year, Santa communicates with me. I hear him and he tells me things about what's going on at the North Pole and some of his concerns and worries and things associated with the holiday season. Santa does reach out to me and he tells me about the background of what's happening at the North Pole and especially how various bad guys are trying to hack into the North Pole infrastructure. I am so thankful that Santa shares this stuff with us so that we can put his stories together and present them to you every year as part of the SANS Holiday Hack Challenge. Now, now here's the deal. Um, everything that you hear uh, in association with these challenges is based on real world events that have happened at the North Pole very recently. And I'd like to tell you, you are here as part of KringleCon, the first ever Holiday Hack Challenge that is in the form of a conference set at the North Pole. But make no mistake about it, this is a holiday hack challenge, and Santa Claus has some questions that he's going to want you to answer, and you'll see those as you progress through the conference and watch some talks. So thank you, Santa Claus, for sharing, for, for opening up your toy basket and sharing with us all of the stories and ideas from the North Pole. Now, an important concept to remember is to play Holiday Hack Challenge 2018. That's this year's challenge. You do not need to have played any holiday hack challenges in the past. You're starting fresh. You can start from here and move forward. You don't have to go to the holiday hack challenges of the past. You do not need to do this at all. However, I'd like to give you a little bit of context of why KringleCon exists. And to understand why Santa Claus wanted to host KringleCon, we need to go back through the last three holiday hack challenges. I'd like to very briefly give you a summary of each of the three holiday hack challenges of the past. Now, you don't have to have worked on these holiday hack challenges to do great in holiday hack challenge 2018, but they are useful knowledge to understand how we got here. The first one of the last three years was holiday hack challenge 2015. We called it Gnome in Your Home. In this holiday hack challenge, there was a, um, there was a certain toy that the retail stores were selling for Christmas. It was called Gnome in Your Home. And the idea was it was this little doll that you could get and you could plug it into the wall and it would start playing 8-bit holiday music. And there were two kids, Jessica and Joshua, and their dad bought them one of these little Gnome in Your Homes and they put it in their house. There are actually over two million houses that had a Gnome in Your Home back in the 2015 challenge. Anyway, Jessica and Joshua were analyzing their little Gnome in the home and they noticed something weird. There was a stream of wireless packets that was coming off of the device. And they snipped open their gnome in the home and they pulled out a little electronic circuit from it and it had a, a little board on it and they extracted the firmware. They extracted the firmware from the gnome in their home and then they did some analysis of it. So you were able to, in 2015, to go into their neighborhood and explore. We, you were able to find Jessica and Joshua, you were able to get the packet capture as well as the firmware and start analyzing it. And as you analyze this, you had to figure out what the nefarious plot was. And it turns out that the company that sold the gnomes was called Atnus Corporation, 
A-T-N-A-S. And what Atnas Corporation was trying to do was to sell these gnomes far across the land. And then they were taking pictures. And parents were encouraged to move the gnomes around in their house so that every day they'd get a picture of a different place. Then Atnas Corporation was going to take all of these pictures and do crowdsourced burglary. You see, the gnomes would take these pictures and send them up to five super gnomes. These are five gnomes to rule them all. And these super gnomes are all on different continents. Anyway, you would have to hack into the super gnomes, pull information from them, and try to determine who was the evil mastermind behind Atmos Corporation. And as you analyzed it, you would determine that it was Cindy Lou Who, aged 62. You see, Cindy Lou, who, that little girl who saw the Grinch stealing her Christmas tree, she was so scarred by that occurrence that she decided that someday she was going to grow up and do what the Grinch tried to do, but she was going to do it right. She was going to steal all the Christmas presents on Christmas Eve by crowdsourcing the burglary. So you had to help in 2015 bring Cindy Lou Who to justice. That was 2015. We move forward to 2016 Holiday Hack Challenge. This one we called Santa's Business Card. We also had Jessica and Joshua in this one as well. And they woke up one Christmas Eve, very late at night, and they heard Santa's sled land on their roof. They could hear the uh, footprints of the reindeer. They could also hear Santa sliding down their chimney. And then they kind of creep out of their, their bedroom and they go downstairs. Now they don't see Santa, but just before they get there, they hear him delivering the presents. But then suddenly they hear this sound of a struggle and a fight and, and they hear the sound of somebody cracking a Christmas tree over Santa's head and then they drag Santa away. And then Jessica and Joshua go out and look at their living room and their Christmas tree is broken. There's Christmas tree needles all over the place and Santa's bag is left there. But Santa's been kidnapped, you see? Now they look in Santa's bag, and when you go into the 2016 Holiday Hack Challenge, you can go in and see Santa's bag is there. You can walk right into the world. And when you reach into Santa's bag or go into Santa's bag, foo, you're teleported. And now you're at the North Pole. Because you see, Santa's bag is a teleportation device. Santa doesn't actually put all the toys in the bag and then move the bag around. But instead, the bag is a portal back into the North Pole. So he just carries the bag around and then he can reach into the bag and pull out the presents. It all makes sense now, yes. So you go into the bag and then boom, you pop out at the North Pole. You start exploring the North Pole and you see all kinds of interesting things there and you start talking with the elves. But as you work your way into it, you find that there is a train, a big blue train. And there's computer controls for the train and you have to hack the train. And when you do, it activates the time traveling functionality of the train and whoosh, the train travels back to 1978, and then you can get off the train and start walking around. The music changes, the hue changes, the elves start talking about different things. And when you work your way through the 1978 part of the game, you find Santa there. Santa has been imprisoned in the dungeon for errant reindeer. So you have to take Santa and you bring him back to 2016. You still got to find out who the bad is guy is. So you start exploring around looking to see who the bad guy is. And ultimately you're hacking your way into various things and you discover that the bad guy is Doctor Who. And Doctor Who had kidnapped Santa, took him back to 1978 so that he could suppress the release of the Star Wars Holiday Special. Doctor Who thought that was such a blight on the universe that he wanted to rub it out and he needed Santa's magic to do that. So you could have worked your way through that whole challenge and ultimately saved Christmas by restoring Santa Claus after he had been kidnapped. So that's Santa's business card. The whole thing starts with the business card because that's all that's left among all of the needles that are dropped from the tree right next to Santa's bag is that Santa's business card. So you got to save Christmas in 2016. In 2017, the Holiday Hack Challenge opens up with giant snowballs pouring down the mountain of the North Pole. And they're crushing things. They're like crushing elves and crushing houses. They're just terrible. You've got to figure out who is throwing down the snowballs and why. And as you work your way through this, you discover there's a thing called the Great Book. And the Great Book is a history of the elves. But it's not just of the elves themselves. The elves are actually a faction 
of the Munchkins of Oz. You see, the great book is this wonderful book that was shredded by an interdimensional tornado. And you have to fetch different pages of this book. And one of the pages describes the united people of the Munchkins of Oz. But it also has another page that talks about the Great Schism. And that's where the Munchkins and the elves were somehow put against each other. Now, we've lost to history why the Munchkins and the elves were actually uh, hating each other. They're from the original same species, but they split up during the Great Schism, and it was almost a civil war in Oz. But the Wizard of Oz contacted Santa Claus and said, hey, I got a problem here. And Santa said, well, wait a second. Look, I'm setting up a toy delivery operation up here at the North Pole, so maybe your problem can help solve my problem. Why don't you send me the elves? And I'll use them to help, you know, deliver all the toys. And then you keep the munchkins there in Oz and we'll have peace. The Wizard of Oz liked this idea from his good friend Santa Claus. And he went even further. He said, look, the scientists of Oz have created flying monkeys as well as flying reindeer. Why don't you take the flying reindeer with the elves so you can go up to the North Pole and they can both help you as you do your stuff. And this worked great for centuries. This great schism, this splitting of the peoples of Oz. But then suddenly these snowballs start falling down and you gotta figure out who's behind it. As you hack your way into things, you ultimately discover that who's throwing the snowballs? It's the abominable snow monster. But the snow monster himself is under a spell. He's not doing this of his own volition. Instead, as you hack through more things, you discover, you do true attribution and you find out that it was ultimately Glinda, the so-called good witch of Oz. That's why we call it Wintered, the untold story of the elves of the North Pole. Glinda the Good Witch has cast a spell on the abominable snow monster so that while he's mesmerized, he's throwing these giant snowballs down the mountain of the North Pole. Why did Glinda do this? She did it because she wanted to start a war between the elves and the munchkins. She was a war profiteer. She wanted to sell her magic and her spells to both sides so she could make a ton of money. So that's what happened in 2017. All right, so where are we going with this? Well, that brings us to this year. Santa Claus looked at the last three years and said, wait a second, folks. In 2015, we had Cindy Lou Who trying to destroy Christmas. In 2016, Doctor Who kidnapped me and he was trying to destroy the holiday season. And then in 2017, Glinda the Good Witch is trying to break apart the North Pole with giant snowballs and incite a massive war. Santa Claus said, this has got to stop. So what Santa did is he came up with the idea of hosting a conference at the North Pole, a conference for information security and hackers alike, information security personnel and hackers joining together, working together, building our skills so that we can help keep the world and the holiday season safe from evil holiday supervillains. That's the whole idea of KringleCon. We're gonna get a whole bunch of people together and try to prevent some sort of holiday disaster. That's why KringleCon exists, and I'm so excited that Santa had this idea. Now, what can you do at KringleCon? Well, first of all, KringleCon is a conference. It's a hacker conference for people around the world. It's for hackers, it's for InfoSec professionals, it's for uh, digital forensics and incident response people, cyber defense people, developers, it's for everybody. And you can attend their talks. We've got a ton of talks for you to see. And I'd like to thank all of our speakers. Uh, you know, they got this invite uh, from Santa Claus and they all responded saying, yes, I wanna be a part of that. I wanna help Santa make the holiday season safe for everyone. Now, you can go into all of those talks, but I wanna give you a little hint. First, challenge hints are included in talks that are given by CounterHack personnel. CounterHack uh, is a company that I work with and uh, we have a bunch of elves that work there. And if you see a talk on the agenda from somebody from CounterHack, that talk is there to help give you hints to solve the challenges. Because you see, there's, there's gonna be a bunch of challenges that you're gonna need to answer, right? So look at the CounterHack personnel talks and they will give you hints. There's other talks by other fine speakers and I hope you check those out. We've got a great keynote talk by Dave Kennedy. It's just awesome. All of our other talks range about 10 to 15 minutes, give or take, and you should check all those out. But the counterhack talks, they're the ones that give you hints for your challenges. You can also chat with fellow attendees. We've got a chat system that is integrated into the KringleCon interface, and you can talk with your fellow attendees. You can, um, you can work in teams. And people ask me, when we're working through these challenges, how big can our teams be? The answer is 
we don't care. Just enjoy the, the challenges. If you want to work in a team of two or five or 10, that's totally good. Sometimes we'll even hear stories about how entire classrooms of students at the junior high level or the high school level or college students, a whole class of 20 or 30 students will work together on some of these challenges. And we love that. You know, if, if you want, you can um, take a picture of you or your kids or your fellow classmates working on a challenge and tweet it. And uh, if you wouldn't mind mention me in, mentioning me in the tweet, I'll, I'll, I'll collect those tweets and just at Ed Scotus, I'll collect those tweets of the, the photos and such. And usually I release some sort of year end thing of people working on the holiday hack. So you can chat with your fellow attendees, you can work as teams, you can have some fun. Also, Santa has issued a series of questions. I mean, this is what makes it the holiday hack. There's about 10 questions that Santa asks. And as you answer those questions, uh, you'll build your skills and uh, you'll see some fun and interesting things happening. Now, the questions start out in a very straightforward fashion and they build over time and they get more and more complex and difficult. Oh, you can hear in the background now, my office is actually striking the top of the hour. So we're going to go ahead and let that play while I continue to speak. You can also explore Santa's castle. And in Santa's castle, <laughs> in addition to having all kinds of interesting music and sounds that play on their own, not unlike my office, we have Big Ben toning right now. In addition to that, there's also a bunch of fun things for you to explore in the castle. As you click on things in the castle, they'll open up and you can do things and interact with them. Another really big hint for you is that Santa's elves provide hints, but you first need to solve some terminal challenges. So the concept here is you go up to a terminal challenge. It's just a, a simple little cranberry pie terminal. Wherever you see a little cranberry pie on a terminal, click on that thing and it'll pop you right into a command line. And then you have to solve some challenges there. The, the Cranberry Pie terminal challenges are designed to be fairly straightforward. You kind of have to hack your way out of something there. And then the associated elf will give you some hints. Now, another thing, in addition to seeing the elves throughout the castle, you'll also see the toy soldiers. The toy soldiers are kind of Santa's security force, but I got to tell you, the toy soldiers just aren't very friendly. In fact, some of them are downright mean. So, you know, try to stay away from those toy soldiers. Uh, yeah, and, and they sometimes seem to get even meaner as time goes on. Gosh, I really hope we have a good and happy and safe KringleCon this year. I mean, I hope, I hope nothing goes wrong because that would, be, that would be bad. Yeah, and if it does go wrong, gosh, I hope our attendees will be able to help us uh, take care of all that. Oh, and by the way, we have a vendor booth, too, that has T-shirts for sale. So you can always stop by the vendor booth. It's near the lobby. And uh, there's also an agenda in the lobby so you can see the various talks that we're giving. And let me move now on to conclusions. Please enjoy the event. Savor this. Santa Claus worked hard. So did all the elves. And uh, like I said, let's hope this year goes smoothly and no holiday supervillain tries to, to do anything nasty to KringleCon. That would be bad. Oh, and if you do tweet about the event, please use the, the hashtag SANS and then hashtag holiday hack. That would be really nice if you do. And if you, if you send a picture of, of you or, or your kids or somebody like that playing your friends, uh, if you put my name in it, at Ed Scotus, that would be a delight so I can find them easily and pull all those pictures together. And uh, without uh, going uh, any further, let's just go ahead and say thank you again for joining us. Enjoy KringleCon. Just have fun, jam into the music, exploring the castle, watching some of the great talks by just phenomenal speakers, and then, of course, solving some challenges. So welcome to Sans Holiday Hack 2018. Welcome to KringleCon. Santa Claus sends you his best. Thank you so much. <laughs>